Hi, I'm Ring Spasovic and in this video I will show you how to integrate Keyclock authentication with Blazor WebAssembly and .NET Web API. Authentication is a crucial part for securing any application and Keyclock provides a powerful way to manage users' roles and access control. By the end of this one, you will know how to properly set up and use Keyclock to authenticate your Blazor and Web API applications. Of course, if you liked the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to help me and the channel as well. Now, let's get started. Keycloak is an open source identity and access management solution that provides authentication, authorization, and user management out of the box. It supports industry standard protocols like OpenID Connect and OAuth2, making it a great choice for securing applications. Now, before I start with the implementation, we need to understand how the authorization flow works with OpenID Connect and Keycloak. So, as soon as a user tries to log in, or access the protected page, the client sends an authentication request with the response type code and other required parameters. The IDP, or Identity Provider, shows the login page to the user and as soon as the user provides credentials and gives consent, if requested, the IDP validates the code and the client credentials. Then, it issues the ID token and the access token. It can issue the refresh token as well, if requested. The client application then uses the access token to attach it to the HTTP request, usually as a barrier token. The access token is needed for the verification process against the Web API. Finally, the Web API replies after it successfully validates the token. So, let's see how we can implement this flow. Just before I do that, I would like to let you know about our courses. We just released the Minimal API online text course that you can find alongside the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API, Blazor WebAssembly, and Microservices courses. So feel free to check out the new platform and explore all the courses available. As you can see, I already have two initial projects created. Blazor WebAssembly with individual accounts authentication type selected as a client app and Web API as a server app. But we are not yet ready to write the code. First, we need to set up Keycloak. I will assume you already have a Docker desktop installed, since it is the easiest way to work with Docker. If you don't have it installed, just download it online and install it. It is simple as that. With it installed, I can run this command in the CMD or PowerShell window. This will download the image and install the required container mapping the port 8080 and providing the username and admin parameters. Ok, with the image downloaded, we can see that the container is already running. And let's navigate to localhost 8080 admin to be redirected to the login pop-up. Let's use credentials admin admin. So, the first thing I will do is create a new realm. A realm in Keycloak is an isolated authentication and authorization space where users, roles, clients and identity providers are managed. It acts as a container for everything related to identity and access management. By default, a master realm is created, but we need a new one. So, I need to click on the master realm and once the menu appears, click on the create realm button. Add the name for our realm blazor web api realm and click the create button with this we create a new realm and navigate directly there so we need to register both clients web api and blazor web assembly and let's start with the web api client to do that let's open the clients menu and click the create client button once the create client page opens we can populate the required fields the client type is open id connect which is set by default. Client ID, Web API, and you can add a name and description if you want. Client authentication off, and you can see these question mark icons here that explain each option. Authorization off, standard flow enabled off, direct access grants enabled off, both root and home URLs are blank, and finally, click save. Since the Web API client is our server app, we don't need to populate anything except the client ID field. Additionally, I need to map a correct audience for the Web API client because without this step, the odd claim will be just an account, which we don't want. To do that, 
let's open the client scopes menu and hit the create client scope button. Once the page opens, I need to populate the name Blazor API scope. Also, let's turn on include in token scope so that the scope is included in the generated access token, if you need it, of course. Finally, let's click the save button. After I'm done with the scope creation, I can see a new page with the mappers tab. Let's open that tab and click the configure new mapper button. Choose audience from the table. This will be a mapper type. Add any meaningful name like Blazor API audience. Select the Web API client in the included client audience DDL and click the save button. This ensures any time the Blazor API scope is requested and granted, the Blazor API audience will be added to the access token. Okay, to continue with another client, as I did with the previous client, I have to navigate to the client's menu and hit the create client button. Now I can populate the required fields. Client type is by default OpenID Connect. Client ID is Blazor Client. You can provide the name and a description if you want. Client type, public. And I'm setting this to off because Blazor WebAssembly apps are considered public clients. We should select the standard flow only. For the valid redirect URIs, I will set localhost 5000, authentication, login callback. And logout redirect will have authentication logout callback. Finally, let's click the save button to save changes. Once I save the changes, we can see the web origins populated automatically for course. Also, pay attention that my app is running on localhost 5000. If yours is running on a different port, you should provide that one. Additionally, I need to allow our frontend app to request the client scope we created earlier. That's how it can get access tokens with the correct audience. So, from the current screen, let's open the Client Scopes tab and click the Add Client Scope button. Select the previously created scope, Blazor API Scope. Choose Add Optional as I want the client to request it and not add it by default. Great! We should be able to locate Blazor API Scope in the scope list right after the address and basic scopes. Finally, I need a new user created. Once on the form, let's populate the necessary fields. Username Codemaze, email Codemaze test at gmail.com, first name code, last name Maze, and click the create button to create a new user. This user needs a password to log in, so to set the initial password, let's click credentials at the top of the page, click the set password button, and populate the form with the password. Also, I will toggle temporary to off so the user does not need to update this password at the first login. Excellent. With all the previous steps, we have prepared a key clock authentication and now I can do some coding. So, let's first prepare the Web API project. Here, the first thing I need to do is to install the Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Jot Barrier package. It will help us with the authentication process. Then, in the program class, let's add the required code for the authentication right below the course configuration. First, I will add authentication to my application using JotBear authentication. To do that, I will call the add authentication method on the builder services collection. This method requires a scheme name, so I will pass JotBear defaults dot authentication scheme which tells the application that I will use JOT authentication. Next, I will configure the JOT bearer authentication by calling the add JOT bearer method. This method takes a lambda expression where I can set up various options. Inside the lambda, the first property I will set is authority. This specifies the key cloak server's URL, including the realm name. The authority is responsible for issuing and validating tokens. Then, I will set the audience property. This defines the expected audience for the token, ensuring that only tokens intended for my API are accepted. In Keycloak, I have set up a client name Web API, so I will use that value here. By default, JotBear authentication requires HTTPS, 
However, since I'm running Keycloak locally using HTTP, I need to disable the requirement. Now, I will configure the token validation parameters to enforce security checks on the incoming tokens. I will create a new token validation parameters object and set various properties. Validate issuer to true to ensure that the token was issued by a trusted authority, Keycloak. Validate audience true. This checks the token's audience matches my expected audience, Web API. Validate lifetime true to verify that the token has not expired. And validate issuer signing key true to ensure the token signature is valid. With all this prepared, I need to enable authorization in my application by calling the add authorization method. Finally, let's add the authentication middleware with the use authentication method. Okay, after I'm done with the server app, I can continue with the Blazor WebAssembly app and configure the Keycloak authentication there. We must have this package, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly Authentication installed. But since I used Blazor WebAssembly app with individual users for authentication, it is already installed. Now let's modify the program CS class. First, I will locate the existing add OpenID Connect authentication method, which I will use to set up OpenID Connect authentication. Now I will configure the authority. The value specifies the Keycloak server's URL, including the URL name. The same I use for the Web API app. Next, I will configure the client ID. This represents the OpenID Connect client that I have registered in Keycloak. In my setup, I have a client named Blazor client, so I will assign that value. Then I will set the response type. This defines the authentication flow that OpenID Connect should use. I will set it to code, which means my Blazor app will use authorization code flow. This is the recommended flow for the client applications because it securely exchanges an authorization code for an access token. Finally, I need to add the required scopes. Scopes define the permissions that my application will request from Keycloak. Here, I will add Blazor API scope, which ensures my Blazor app can request access to protect the resources in the web API. You remember, I set this one as an optional scope, so I have to request it manually. After this, let's modify the HTTP client configuration to include the access token. But first, I need to install one package. With it, I am able to use HTTP client factory in my app. Now, let's remove this HTTP client code and add a new one. First, I will register an HTTP client named Weather API using the add HTTP client method. This allows my Blazor WebAssembly application to send a request to an external API. Inside the configuration, I will set the base address for the HTTP client. This is a default URL where all requests from this client will be sent. Since my web API is running on HTTPS localhost 5001, I will set it accordingly. Now, I need to ensure that this HTTP client automatically attaches an authentication token to requests sent to the web API. To do this, I will use the add HTTP message handler method. Inside this handler, I will retrieve an instance of authorization message handler from the service provider. This is a built-in Blazor WebAssembly component that helps attach barrier tokens to HTTP requests. Next, I will configure this handler to apply authentication to specific URLs. In this case, I only want it to attach authentication tokens when making requests to my web API at localhost 5001. Finally, I will return the configured handler. Additionally, to avoid changing a lot of code on the page where the app already uses the HTTP client, I will register the factory here and create the required client. Of course, to learn how to use HTTP client factory even better with different named and type clients, you can watch my video where I cover that topic. You can find the link in the description below. Ok, to slowly finish this implementation, let's open the weather page and protect it first. Finally, in the add code section of the same page, 
I need to modify the HTTP call. Great. Also, let's protect an endpoint on the web API side. That's all. I can run this app and the client app and test this. As we can see, we have the login link in the upper right corner. So let's click on it. Once we do that, the Keycloak authentication pop-up will appear where we need to use the credentials of our created user. You can also check the URI here and see all the different parameters inside. Ok, let's sign in. And we can see the hello message and the logout button. Now, we can navigate to the weather page and we should get the data. Finally, to inspect the scope and the token, we can open the DevTools, Applications tab, and here, under the Session Storage menu, we can find the third OpenID Connect key. Let's copy the value and inspect it inside the Jot.io page. You can see the issuer and the audience inside the token. Great! In the next video, I will talk about role-based authorization with Keycloak, so make sure to check that one as well. Ok, with this setup, my Blazor WebAssembly app can securely communicate with the Web API, automatically including authentication tokens in requests. This ensures that only authorized users can access protected resources. Now, everything is in place for seamless and secure API calls. If you found this video helpful, you can like, share and subscribe. And as always, feel free to leave any questions or feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, all the best.